There's a hair in my tea. Hello everyone. It's really important to refresh yourself every now and then, which is something that I think I always forget to do. Even if there's a lot going on in life that's confusing or sad, it is so valuable to get away somewhere and just be. Obviously nature is good for our mental health and obviously I know that in theory, but at some point as a teenager I just stopped going on walks. I stopped going for cycles on my own for miles and miles through parks and hillsides and along rivers. And it's only now that we've had so much time on our hands and have been forcibly withdrawn from the frantic rush of everyday life that all those vague plans to go camping for once not at a festival and those potential trips to the coast on my own or with friends aren't just something that's on my radar or something I'd like to do one day, but an essential part of my existence. I've always been someone who films everything I do. Not in an evasive way. I hope that my friends and the people around me can attest to the fact that even if I have my camera with me the whole time, it's never what my attention's on. I think I've managed to strike a good balance between documenting things for my own sake, which I then quite often share here, and hashtag living in the moment, because it's the atmosphere of experiences that I want to hold on to. Something that kind of stores the emotions I was experiencing or the mindset I was in. I spend probably the majority of my time editing for different types of video. And that has meant that over the years, my life has gradually been more and more drawn to staying inside. But then when I had multiple jobs, it would physically pain me. The feeling of rushing around all day, serving unappreciative customers in a restaurant or shop, and then gazing out of the window as hours and hours of beautiful sunshine turned to rain. I think some of my most peaceful moments were spent on my lunch breaks, sitting in a park, trying my best to absorb as much sun as I possibly could, dreading the idea of going back to work, but so, so present in the peace and the warmth and that fleeting sense of freedom. But then when I quit those jobs, all that really good intention to value my new time would be overshadowed by this overwhelming sense of urgency to tackle all the unfinished projects in my life. Stuck in a cycle of waking up late and then desperately trying to reclaim all of those lost hours by pushing myself further and further into the night. Thinking if I could just get up earlier tomorrow, if I could just have one week where my brain cooperates with me, if I could just get those things done, then, then I'll start living life how I want to. And that's something everyone does, right? We won't spend a little bit of that money we've been saving to go on a trip somewhere special with some friends because we're saving to make a better life. You're thinking, I've only got to do this for a short while and then everything's gonna to click together. Each of us realizing that that's not how it works again and again, but none of us able to stop. Stop being so hard on yourself. Stop punishing yourself for a perceived lack of productivity and realize that it's the punishments that are stifling the productivity. You're not getting anything done because you're not allowing yourself to live. And then every now and then, some unexpected cancellation, a surprise night off, an impromptu trip, shift something in your head. Like the structure of time warps back to what it used to be. The shape of the weeks and the angle that each month looms over you eases off. And you're gifted with the ability to just be present and look around at the smiling and happy faces of your friends laughing and dancing and lying in the sun. It is so important to make friends with people different from you. Even in just like different skills and interests and stuff. And it's relatively easy to find those people when you have a normal everyday job. Rotating shifts force a conveyor belt of moments and people and lives whose paths have only really crossed by chance, by a need to pay rent. I am so grateful that my workplace has always been an ongoing source of some of the most important people in my life. I used to do this thing when I was a teenager, depressed and lonely and directionless. I'd close my eyes and I'd try to envision the faces of the people that I might love one day the people that would become like family. I tried to picture the flats that we might live in one day and the houses we'd share. I tried to imagine the feeling in my heart of being sat on a sofa in some strange building that had grown to become my home, leaning my head on the shoulders of my friends. I tried to imagine what it would feel like to be navigating life together, sharing ourselves and our passions and dreams and sharing our shopping lists and scrubbing the burnt bits of each other's food off the edges of pots and pans. Who were gonna be the people that would help carry the burdens of my secrets and shames? What would their faces look like? How would they feel? What would their stories be? What would I learn from them? And I'd get such a deep sense of comfort knowing that somewhere those people were living their lives. Unimaginable to me yet, unfinished. Packaging all my experiences and everything I was 
into someone that would one day be the person my friends would look into the eyes of and feel safety and trust. And every few months, or sometimes about once a year or so, I'll have those moments of clarity and appreciation. I'm able to look around and realize that that's the life I'm living right now. That is the person I am. And for all our money stresses and misunderstandings and those feelings of utter hopelessness at the state of everything around us and how unequipped we are to protect each other from the world, the security of having a home that I love in a place that's stable for the most part and people around me with so much love to give and so much trust is such a privilege. is a disgrace to myself and my soul to not force myself to cherish that because I remember all of those moments with old friends who've come and gone from my life with respect and love and one day these moments and this safety and these people will just be memories and I would be so furious at myself if I hadn't given it my absolute best efforts to give them all the attention they deserved and documented this atmosphere, this phase of life, of youth. Sometimes you need friends to draw you back out to scenarios that elicit that clarity, to invite you to opportunities and initiate a getaway. And in my experience, it's always a very good idea to move those people into your home. <laughs> and in my experience, you can't force yourself to be happy on days where your mental health is against you. You can't magically alter the thought processes that make you feel isolated and dazed. You can't force yourself to remember things if your mind doesn't feel completely present. You can't make yourself commit to living in a moment. But with the kindness and care of good people, even if you find yourself feeling like you didn't get as many hours out of the day as you wanted to. Sometimes the stars align, the weather is perfect. And it's nice to get a reminder that life is good. <laughs> 